In the present video, I will be explaining how to read the information in clues in an OGIS. I will be explaining with an example. This is the sample. This OGIS shows the hourly wages of a sample of a company workers. The hourly wages appears in the x-axis. The cumulative frequency appears in the y-axis. We need to remember that every point in the OGI represents the relation between the value of the variable and the cumulative frequency. We also need to remember that the ticks we use in the x-axis, like this 5, 10, 15, are the limits of the class intervals, and that the point we use to make the OGI, this point, for example, this point and this point, show the relation between the upper limit of the interval and the cumulative frequency. So with this information, we can answer some questions. Let's see the questions. How many workers were here studied? What is the class interval? Or what is the width of the class? About how many workers earn less than 10 per hour? About 75% of the workers make less than what amount? 20 of the workers studied may less than what amount? What percentage of the workers may less than 20 per hour? In most of this question appears less than. And the reason of that is that this OI represents the less than cumulative frequency. Let's answer the first question. How many workers here were studied? So this information is here in the OI. And because it's this the cumulative frequency, and if you see this $30, that is the maximum wages, is related to the number 80. So always in the OI, the cumulative frequency of the highest point is the total numbers of elements in the sample. So in this case, this will be this 80. So the answer of this first question is just 80. N equal 80. So how many workers were studied? 80. This information is in the OI. Here is another question. What is the class interval? I told you that the ticks in the x-axis represent the limit of each interval. For example, in the first interval is from 0 to 5. The second interval is from 5 to 10. So each interval has a width of 5. So if I, can, if I can see here that i equals 5, or from this up to this, from 5 to 10, 10 minus 5 equals 5, or 15 minus 10 equals 5. This distance between the limit of each interval is what we call the class interval of the width of the class. So i equals 5. Let's answer the second question. i equals 5. The third question. Let's go to the third question about how many workers earn less than $10 per hour. Remember, all these numbers in the x-axis are the wages. For example, $10 per hour refers to this number, 10. If I want to see how many workers earn less than $10 per hour, I can go to see what point is related to number 10, is this point, and to see how many workers work less than this $10, this information will be in the y-axis. This is the cumulative frequency. So let's move to the left to find what number is related to number 10. And this is a number close to 20, around 22. So the answer for this question will be 22 or 23. This, let's approximate to 22. And I'm giving you an approximation here. So this will be 22. So this answer, this Third question. So let's go to the fourth question. About 75% of the workers may less than what amount? So here we have also the percent at the other side, at the right side. So if you notice, I put here the cumulative relative frequency. So if, I, if the question is about 75% of the workers may less than, and again may less than what amount, so now I'm going to start from here, 75%, and go to see what point in the OI is related to this 75. So you yeah, are moving to the left, is this point. So to see how much these workers make, so I'm going to go down. 
So this is 20. So the answer for this question is $20. So 75% of the workers make less than $20. And that's it, that answers this question. Let's see another question here. 20 of the workers studied made less than what amount? Number of workers, yeah, 20 workers. I need to look for this number here in the cumulative frequency. And the number 20 is here. And if I want to see which hourly wage is related to this number 20, I got from this 20 to the left, to the OI, starting from this point, if I go down now, I notice that the hourly wage is, is nine. So it will be $9, the answer. 20 of the workers studied made less than $9. I'm just making here an approximation because I don't have the exact amount. I cannot find an exact answer for this question, but at least I have an approximation, and the approximation is this nine. Let's answer the next question. What percentage of the workers made less than $20 per hour? So $20 per hour. So now I notice that the variable I have is $20 per hour. So I need to find this $20 here in hourly wages. And then this $20 is here. And if I want to know what percentage of the workers, so I just need to go up and find the point in the yai. And as soon as I get the point in the yai, I got and found the percentage of workers that made less than $20. And this is 75%. So the answer here is 75%. If the question is how many workers make less than $20, then I go up from this 20 to the point, and then I move to the left, and I found the number of workers that made less than $20. Though yeah, I have so much information that I can reconstruct the frequency distribution from the OI. For example, if I want to construct the frequency distribution from the OI, I noted that it will be six intervals. So I can make a frequency distribution with six intervals. So I can make a table like this. And I know that the variable is hourly wages. So I know that the name of the variable is hourly wages. And I also know that the first interval is from zero to five. So I can type here from zero to under five as the first interval. And the second interval will be from five to 10. So it will be five to under 10. And the third interval 10 to 15 or 10 to under 15. So it will be 10 to under 15, 15 to under 20, 20 to under 25, 25 to under 30, and that's it. I can type the total at the end. So it will be total. I can find, for example, the frequency the cumulative frequency and the cumulative relative frequency from the information given here. Because the object is giving you the cumulative frequency. For example, it's telling me that the cumulative frequency corresponding to the upper bound five, it will be a number, let's see, around four. Right? Let's type here four. I, I, I'm giving you just approximation, just to understand what this object means. For the second interval, when the upper bound is 10, I noted that 10 is here and it is related to number 22, which is, so will be 22, the cumulative frequency for 5 to under 10. And then for number 15, it will be a number here close to 40, eh? maybe 45, close here. So here in the middle will be 50, and then this number will be like 45. So let's approximate here 45. And from number 20, the cumulative frequency related to number 20 is 60. So I'm going to type here 60. And the cumulative uh, frequency related to number 25, it will be the num a number here. So it will be around mm, 72. Yeah? So it's, uh, it's in the middle of between 60 and 80, a little more maybe 72. And finally, related to 30, it will be 80. If I found this number, the, cumu the cumulative relative frequency, it will be easy. Just divide the number, the cumulative frequency, divided by the total number. For example, 4 divided by 80. That is 0 0.05. So I can type here 
25%. Or 22 divided by 80. I found that this is 0 0.2750, so it's 27.50%. Or 45 divided by 80. 45 divided by 80 is 0 0.5625, so the answer will be 56.25. Or 60 divided by 80, and I found that this is 0.75, 72 divided by 80 is 0 0.9, so 90%. The last one that will be 80 divided by 80, so it will be 100%. So with this OI, I can construct the relative cumulative frequency. And even I can find now the frequency for each of the classes. For example, we know that the first class, always the frequency is the same cumulative frequency. So for this is four. And for the second one, we know that we need to add four plus the frequency to, to get this 22. So this number here needs to be 18. So four plus 18, I get 22. For the next one, I need to find what number I need to add to 22 to get this 45. Remember that to, to get the cumulative frequency, we add the cumulative frequency of the previous class plus the frequency of the class. So I need to know what, what number needs to be added to, to 22. I get to 45. So for sure, this number is 23. And this number is 45, and the next one is 60, so it means that this frequency needs to be 15. And is this 60 and the next one is 72, meaning that this, this one needs to be 12. And finally, if this is 72 and the next one is 80, now I know that this frequency needs to be 8. So adding all these numbers, the answer is for sure 80. And with this, I finish my explanation. Thank you.